Reception of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Alas for you, Chorazin, alas for you, Bethsaida, for if the miracles done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. And still, it will not go as hard with Tyre and Sidon at the judgment as with you. And as for you, Capernaum, did you want to be exalted high as heaven? You shall be thrown down to hell. Anyone who listens to you listens to me. Anyone who rejects you rejects me. And those who reject me reject the one who sent me. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Earlier in the Gospel of St. Luke, Jesus sent the 12 apostles out to proclaim the good news of salvation. And now in this Gospel, he sends out the 70 disciples with the same message, that they are to expect rejection and trials in the proclamation of the good news of salvation. Many prophets have in the past threatened and warn the towns of Tyre and Sidon that if they do not change from their wickedness, they will experience suffering and punishment. They have become the archetypes of impiety and disobedience to God's ways. As for the three lake towns of Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, Jesus cautions them and predicts that they will be judged even more severely than the towns of Chorazin, Bethsaida, and, and, and Capernaum. Why? Because they have received more divine graces from God. They have seen the miracles and the wisdom of teachings of Jesus, and yet they do not bear fruit in their faith and lives. And therefore, Jesus reminds them that truly, if they do not change for the better in spite of all the abundant graces, then expect greater sufferings. This is the law of proportionality, where it is a fair and a just way of understanding our faith, where Jesus says, when more graces are given by God and more graces are received by us, more is expected of us. If I reflect on my own life, I'm very blessed to be a born Catholic from very good parents and siblings, and also the many years of Jesuit formation. It is only right that God expects more of me than of others in terms of the living of the faith, in terms of witnessing of the faith. And if I come across people who are broken, who are lost in their lives, who have angry with the church, have left the church, divorce, and sin in so many ways, the first thing we need to know is never to judge people. Because every single person experiences life and faith differently. Leave it to God to judge. If we begin to judge others, we become self-righteous and think that we are holier than other people. So whatever graces and blessings that God has given us, we are called today to reflect on our lives, count our blessings, and be mindful of the abundant blessings that God has given us. Stop complaining about these and that problems and be blind to the great abundant blessings that God has given us. If only we can see how much we are blessed, our heart will be more grateful. We know of how it is said that a person continues to complain about not having good shoes until he sees somebody without feet. In not being judgmental, we are simply called to be compassionate, to be compassionate to people who have lost their faith, who have lost their direction in life, and who have chosen uh, to live the sin. We do not condone the sin. Jesus says, condemn the sin, but never the sinner. The problem is that very often when we get upset, we do not make such a distinction. 
And therefore, Jesus says, remember the gospel is for the salvation of all people. Remember me hanging on the cross. This is the compassionate, unconditional love that I have shown for the need of the salvation of all the world. And as we have received much blessing and still have the gift of faith, be grateful to God. Value the blessings. Do not take God for granted and use them for the greater good of others. And when we come across people who are filled with joy and love of the faith, we praise and thank God. We should unite ourselves more and as church and community witness to the truth of the gospel in spite of the challenges and the temptations and the trials and the distortions of the truth of life of the secular world. As church, as community, we must collectively witness to the truth of the gospel and sow the true hope to the secular world of what life truly means, that life is eventually living the will of God and bringing salvation to all people through Jesus.